Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about building a boat. When you build a room and you're serious about noise, which you should be because keeping a low noise floor is really important. You know, most rooms we see start 50 dB SPL, but you, you really need to be down into the 30s. Just sit in your chair, have a pressure meter, and look, this is really what you want to be at. That is feasible from a construction and material standpoint, and most of the time a cost standpoint. Going below that, then it gets more expensive. You know, probably to get down to 20, which is really quiet, probably costs twice as much to get to 30 and three times what that costs or the ratio there. So it's not linear in, in terms of treatment. So noise and treatment what we're trying to do we're trying to keep energy out from getting in and energy from in from getting out it's like this two-way valve right out and in so this is what we got to build to stop it barrier we got to manage noise transmission using a barrier that's the device that everybody is searching for that's the name that you're going to use think of a tortoise with a shell Think of barrier as the shell. That's what we got to build. Now that shell has to be developed properly. Can't just throw things around, okay? So the room must be built like a boat. Let's use that as our analogy and hopefully that'll get some more comprehension and understanding. We got to have a strong hull. Remember the shell. It's got to take the pressure waves from the ocean. Let's take those as low frequency pressure waves. It's got to be able to take those waves striking it constantly, whether it's a garbage truck on the outside or a kick drum on the inside. It's got to be able to take the pressurized. Because, and the second thing is our boat can't leak. Can't leak at all. It's got to be sealed, pressurized box. That's really what our room is. It's a pressurized box boat so to speak, and that's what we're doing. So low frequency pressure kept in and out. We wanna keep the lows in as much as we can, and we wanna reduce the impact of them leaving, and also we don't want any outside noise, because if you're trying to achieve some noise floor numbers, frequencies below 125 do not help at all. Must much rather fight and get low numbers here with noise issues above 125. Below, the costs go up dramatically. Okay, so we got to keep the middle and high frequency ray energy in and out. And then once we get it balanced in the room, we get the proper barrier, we've got to manage the rate and level of absorption and diffusion, if you will, to manage the internal energy. So the internal is about two things, pressure and reflections, the low end, right? The thing with noise, and when we build our boat and design our barrier, we got to have noise numbers. We got to measure. We got to do it over seven days because you want an accurate picture. We can simulate how much noise you're going to produce in the room once we know the usage. If it's a voice room, we can do that. If it's a drum room, we can do that. Those are your two extremes, and we can do everything in between. So simulating what you're going to do in the room is not a problem. What we never know is how noisy the neighborhood is. Whatever the neighborhood is, wherever the location of the building is, that's the neighborhood. Because what we're trying to do with our barriers, build a wall that doesn't proof anything, because there's no such thing as sound proofing, there's sound management. So if we've got an ambient neighborhood level of 50, any noise that gets out should stay below 50 or a per percentage thereof. There's formulas for that. We're not trying to proof anything. We're just trying to drop below the radar. The radar is the noise in the neighborhood because that way we don't want to spend any more money than we have to on that damn barrier. You never get that money back. That's a permanent construction. It's not a wall hanging unit like treatment stays with the building and you won't get any more value on appraisal for your property because the room is quiet. 
So it's an expense. So we don't want to spend any more than we have to because we're not going to get it back. We're doing noise and the numbers are less than 125. Our costs are going to double because it's just the way it goes. To stop that kind of noise, you have to increase the density, mass, if you will, the, the thickness of the barrier. If it's above 125, it's a completely different story. It's half the cost. So that's why we got to measure, just for those two reasons right there. And when we measure, what are we looking for? The lowest frequency and the highest amplitude. We've got a 40 cycle problem that's plus 10 dB. We got a big problem. But we got to know what the problem is. That's the key. Measure twice, cut once. Building a boat. I really hope this helps. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.